From prehistoric times, we've cultivated the soil to grow plants. But sometimes plants need a little helping hand. Greenhouses let us grow plants faster and for longer than we ever could outside. It's always been difficult to protect plants from the cold, but the Romans thought of a clever way around it. They grew their delicate plants in pots, so in winter they could move them to a warmer place. About 400 years ago, people began to grow seedlings under glass bells outside. The glass let the light in, but kept the wind and rain out. Around the same time, wealthy people in Italy, France and England built buildings with small glass windows. They were used for growing exotic plants such as pineapples. But only the kings and queens could feast on homegrown oranges, lemons, pomegranates and pineapples, whilst everyone else had to make do with apples grown outside. But the windows in these buildings were small, so not much light could get to the plants. The problem was that glass couldn't be made in very large pieces. As soon as they were able to do this, um, around about the same time that, that iron came on, on, on the scene for, for making buildings, we were able to make actually large walls out of glass, and you could grow things inside these buildings um, and heat the building at the same time. Iron was used in buildings in the 1800s. It could be made into bars and shaped into curves, so it was easy to build large structures. Iron made a strong enough frame to support huge buildings, and entire structures could be made from only iron and glass. The Victorians built huge greenhouses to grow and study the extraordinary foreign plants which explorers brought back from their adventures. They could only be grown in England because these new iron and glass structures let in so much light so that even the most exotic palms that needed plenty of light and heat could be grown. Over 20,000 greenhouses were sold in Britain last year. The first modern looking greenhouses were designed by Sir Joseph Paxton 150 years ago. They were triangular structures made from wood and glass. The triangle shape is very strong. Today, aluminium is often used instead of wood or iron. The aluminium is the frame that holds the greenhouse up and keeps the glass in place. It's cheap, very strong, lightweight and doesn't need painting. And aluminium lasts much longer than most woods, which means these greenhouses are also easy to maintain. Glass is still used in modern domestic greenhouses. The glass is easy to fit. This greenhouse has a number of windows too, to let the air around the plants circulate. So now, many more people can have a greenhouse to grow exotic plants, not just the wealthy. Just like humans, Plants need certain conditions to grow healthily. They need something to drink. Well, this Chris hasn't had any water, and that's why it's not growing very well. And this Chris had water, so it's growing very well. Like us, they need food or nutrients. Plant nutrients are found in compost. This Chris hasn't had any compost and it hasn't grown as well as this Chris. Like us, they need sunlight. This Chris is yellow because it had no light, but this Chris is nice and green because it had light. And like us, they need fresh air. This Chris has had oil on it and, ha and hasn't had air. And this Chris has had air, so it has grown perfectly. And like us, they need warmth. This Chris has been in the cold, 
so it hasn't grown as good as this one, which has been in the warmth. This greenhouse grows plants for garden centres. It's bigger than one and a half football pitches. To keep the environment just right for the plants, many greenhouses now have automatic temperature control systems. Computers test the conditions inside the greenhouse and alter them if they're wrong. The computer's sensors can tell if the greenhouse is too hot and operates the mechanism that opens the windows to let the cool air in. The computers can even tell which way the wind is blowing, so it knows which windows to open. When the plants get dry, the computer turns the sprinklers on. You could make a greenhouse to grow plants in, but it doesn't have to be as big as this one. Well, my greenhouse is very small, but it's big enough. You could build a frame structure like the aluminium greenhouse, or a shell structure like this cup. It doesn't need a frame. Your frame could be built from wood or plastic. What other materials could you use? The frame was wood. We measured it with the plastic and we cut it and we stuck it on with the glue gun and we put the cardboard triangles on to make it more secure. We got masking tape and stuck the two sides together. We put masking tape here and masking tape here and made a triangle shape and put two masking tapes at the side. The triangle shape makes the structure strong. You can water your plants from above, like this system. There's a bottle and it's filled with water and it's got a hole at the bottom and the water runs through a tube into the greenhouse and it's got holes on the tube to water the seeds. You can also water your plants from below, like this system. It has water underneath so it can get into the special cup and it can water the plant. This system releases water directly into the soil. This is the water container and uh, if you lift the lid off, the water from the bottom with those holes in goes down to the funnel into the tube and there's holes in the tube in the bottom and the water will go out from the tube and into the seeds. Your seeds will also need light and air. The thing that's special about it is that it's see-through so the sun can get into it. It sticks up to keep the cup up so the plant can breathe. Well, the frame, um, it has quite see-through um, plastic kind of windows to let the light come through. And it has two sides that are triangular shape to let the air come in through each side. The plastic is to protect the seeds so birds don't go anywhere near it and eat the seeds. The plastic also lets light in so it can grow green and good. The plants also need to be warm. The top keeps it warm so the plant can grow. The seeds also need nutrients in soil, compost or dissolved in water. It's got soil on container because it can, it can soak up water and also that it feeds the plant. Once it's finished, you have to put your greenhouse in a good spot. Can you think where? I will put um, my greenhouse near the window so it can have more light and the sun can shine through. So that this glass house could get enough sunlight, the architect, Joseph Paxton, 
built it in a park. He based this window frame design on the structure of a water lily with radial cross ribs to give it strength. In fact, a lot of building ideas come from nature. It's not difficult to guess what the designer was thinking about when he designed this building. Greenhouses have a job to do, but that doesn't mean they can't look interesting. You can decorate structures with all kinds of ideas taken from nature. Maybe you could use ideas from nature to decorate your greenhouse. But we don't just get ideas for decoration from nature. We get ideas for structure too. Take a tree. It's strong but flexible. It's strong because of the structure of its roots which hold it in the ground. It can also bend in the wind because wood is a flexible material. These hexagons give structure and strength to the beehive, just like they give strength to these glass domes, which are, in fact, modern greenhouses. Some greenhouse architects are even interested in spiders. I think some of the exciting things that have been developed at the moment are things like the materials that, are, uh, that a spider's web is made from. A spider's web is incredibly strong for its size and weight, in fact, uh, stronger than steel. We would then be able to make very light structures, but very large structures. Just as iron made new structure designs possible for the Victorians, so modern materials make new building designs possible today. The dream is to make materials like the spider's web strong and light. And new techniques using computers can make designs that were previously impossible possible. Huge plant houses are going to be built on these clay pits in Cornwall to study plants from around the world, just as the Victorians did all those years ago. Without computers and new building materials, these domes, part of the Eden project, could not have been designed. The Eden project is slightly unique in being that it's actually not going to be built out of glass. It's going to be built out of a new material which is actually as transparent as glass but is as thin as a piece of plastic bag. It's a lot stronger than a plastic bag but uh, we can get very, very large panels um, which are replacing what glass used to do. But with this new material we're able to make panels that are completely transparent, the size of a room or even a house. The Eden project, when it's finished, will be home to thousands of plants. But in America, they built the ultimate greenhouse that people, as well as plants, can live in. We've created the right environment for plants to thrive in greenhouses on Earth. And with the help of this greenhouse, one day it might be possible for humans to live in their own greenhouses on other planets. <laughs>